I'm Dr. Selman. Uh, I'm the uh, Professor Emeritus from uh, AU. And what I want to do is to show you how important a lot of the produ production operation management techniques are for you making decisions. Uh, everything that's done in the world today is for ultimately somebody to make a decision. Uh, we all make decisions. They say the average person makes about 140 decisions a day, what to wear, what time to get up, whether to cut class, whether to do many things there. Uh, some of us try to get a little bit edge on it by uh, going to uh, your horoscope and see what the things will be, but it always scares me because I always do it after the fact because of the fact there that uh, I, I don't want it to guide my efforts there. But in fact, everything is guided towards decision making. So let's talk about decision making. Uh, some of them are very big decisions, like of course, your World War II, whether we're to go with the land in Normandy, or whether the land in Calais, and uh, well, let's talk about how we, how we can make it, uh, decisions in our type of world. Now with decision making, we usually say there's three different levels of decision making. We call this a decision making pyramid. Decision. making pyramid, pyramid. The reason why we have it as a pyramid is because we divide this into three different sections. This we call certainty. That's where we would like to be. If we do a certain act, we would we like to be certain to occur. This level here we call a risk. Because this is more probabilistic, because we don't know what the, what's going to occur, but we know with a certain probability something will occur. For instance, if you drive 100 miles an hour along a street, you'll probably get a ticket, but not all the time. But it's called risk or probability. The last level here we call uncertainty. This is the level that most of our decisions are made. We don't know what the probabilities are, but uh, what's going to occur, we say we, we have to make a decision. Now, all decision matrices th that we have here is composed of three, three characteristics. One is we have to worry about alternatives. Alternatives. Two is we worry about the states of nature, what can occur. And three is the payoffs, what do you get. So this, these are the three characteristics that all decision making uh, modes have. So let's, for illustration purposes, to get you working along this line, let's talk about your money. With your money there, where can you put your money? You can always put it on a mattress, you can put it in the stocks, you can put it in bonds, you can do many, many things with it. Uh, however, so let's take a nice simple thing is, uh, let's talk about a matrix, which is an array of numbers, and we'll say alternative one is put your money in the bank. Alternative two is put your money into stocks. Obviously, there's many other things you could do. Put it, put it on your matri mattress, uh, hold on to it, buy gold, buy diamonds, whatever it is. So these are the alternatives. We'll talk about A1 and A2, okay? Now, we'll talk about states of nature. What do you mean by states of nature? I mean, what can occur? So you say states of nature is you can have prosperity. Prosperity. Prosperity, you say, what do you mean by prosperity? Prosperity could be Dow Jones being above 11,000. Uh, or you can have recession, which may mean the Dow Jones falls below 6,000, okay? Or anything you want in between. We can have recession, depression, anything like that. But let's say at this point here, say this is above 11,000, the Dow Jones, and this is below, say, 6,000, okay? Okay, so now we have alternative one, alternative two, state of nature one, state of nature two, so we'll put S1 and S2. Okay? Now, what can we do? What are the payoffs? We did this, we did that, 
What are the payoffs? The payoffs is what can occur, you put your money in the bank to the prosperity, and you put in a long enough time and so forth, let's assume that you can get 4.1 rate of return, okay? Which is high for today's rates there, but basically if you put in a long enough time, 4.1 rate of return. Uh, if you put your money in a bank and there's a recession, you still get the four, four, about 4.0, let's assume that the 0.1 is for you, for your loyalty, keeping your money in that account, renewal. 